Now we will talk about uh, what seems to be a paradox, the twin paradox, known as the twin paradox. Okay, so here is what is going on. Speedo and Goslow are twins. Goslow is on Earth and uh, basically Goslow is observing Speedo travel from Earth to planet X with a speed 0.95 c, 0.95 times the speed of light. Speedo goes to planet X and comes back to Earth. And the distance between Earth and planet X, because planet X appears to be stationary with respect to Earth, is the proper length measured by uh, Gauss law on Earth that is 20 light years away. All right. So what happens? Speedo, upon his return to Earth, is shocked that Gauss law has aged 42 years, but he aged 13 years. How is this possible? Okay, so let's start with the relativistic correction factor gamma for a speed of 0.95c, 1 over square root 1 minus 0.95 squared, that's 3.2. There's an appreciable relativistic correction. So uh, the proper length was measured by the observer Goslow, that's the observer on Earth, with respect to whom planet X is at rest. The proper length is 20 light years, therefore the length uh, measured by Speedo, the distance between Earth and planet X as measured by Speedo is LP divided by gamma, it's contracted, so it will be 20 light years divided by 3.2, that will be 6.25 light years. Okay, now uh, in the reference frame of uh, Speedo, Goslow was moving. And uh, should have aged, according to uh, Speedo, Goslow should have aged more slowly. So we have a problem here, according to this uh, observation by Speedo. Now, let's talk about the proper time. The proper time interval for the travel is measured by Speedo, because Speedo is in a spaceship. The start point and end point are in the spaceship. Therefore, uh, the proper time measured by Speedo is uh, the length measured by Speedo, L, uh, 2L divided by V, so the total uh, travel time, 2L divided by V. Now, uh, 2L is 6.25 times 2, 12.5 light years divided by 0.95C, that gives us 13 years. So in the fr reference frame of uh, Speedo, the time that has elapsed is 13 years to travel to planet X and return to Earth. In the reference frame of Goslow, who is not measuring the proper time, uh, time there is time dilation. Delta Tp is multiplied by gamma, and this is going to be 13 multiplied by 3.2. This will be 4.2 year, uh, 42 years, and the proper length measured was 20 light years. All right. So the paradox is that they age at uh, different rates. Uh, so how is this possible? Well, uh, Speedo accelerates to 0.95c to travel to planet X, uh, and then upon his return to Earth must decelerate to uh, meet uh, Gauss law again. So there is an acceleration and deceleration uh, to reach the Earth back. So since Speedo changes reference frames, he cannot make predictions based on Einstein's theory of special relativity because Einstein's theory of special relativity requires that the two reference frames are inertial frames at all times. However, Speedo enters a non-inertial reference frame in order to meet uh, Gauss law and it, maybe he will stop in planet X. So in, in order to meet uh, stop in planet X, he has to decelerate and re-accelerate, etc. So this is a non-inertial reference frame. Therefore, Speedo's prediction that Goslow was moving with respect to me, dash, therefore he should have a, a, aged more slowly, is incorrect. Speedo cannot make predictions based on theory of special relativity because he changes reference frames and therefore observations made by Gauss law will apply for this case of the twin paradox. Now, 
If we think about a graphical representation of this event, uh, this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis coming out, and uh, this is our ct axis, speed of light times time t. So if you think about Gauss law, Gauss law is at the origin and remains at the origin at all times. Therefore, during the uh, travel of speedo, uh, Gauss law remains on this uh, axis. So the uh, green uh, line here represents what is happening to Gauss law. Now, a path through space-time is called a world line. So uh, we have no motion on, in space on the xy plane, but we have motion on the time axis. Therefore, world line of Gauss law is just a straight line on the ct axis. If you think about world line of light beam, that is diagonal because for a, the, the light x is equal to ct, y is equal to ct. Therefore, we see that light always has to travel on this diagonal path because x is ct, y is ct at the same time. Uh, it has to travel on this cone. Uh, so if rotated around ct axis, uh, this world line of light beam rotated around ct axis gives us the light cone. So if it's moving, if light is propagating on the x-axis, x equals ct. But if you consider all possible directions in which light can, uh, light can propagate, so we have this light cone. Now, all possible events for an observer at the origin are within the light cone. So basically, we have observations within the light cone. How about speedo? Well, speedo is changing position, so speedo is moving on the x-axis. Of course, not with the speed of light, but less than the speed of light, so with 0.95c, and then returns to the position of Gauss law with the same speed. So we see that the world line of speedo consists of these two lines, the travel to planet X and return to Earth. Okay, so this CT versus X graph or CT versus Y graph, etc. This is called the space-time graph, and it represents all possible. Uh, it rep represents the evolution of an event uh, within the uh, light cone uh, of the uh, space-time graph. All right. So uh, we talked about the twin paradox, uh, speedo going from Earth to planet X with 0.95 C and coming back. Gauss laws remaining on Earth. Uh, observing speedo. Gauss law measures the proper length because the planet X is stationary with respect to Earth. Speedo measures the proper time because the end point and the start points are the same in the spaceship of speedo. And uh, the proper time measured by speedo is uh, about 13 years, 12 point, uh, it's about 13 years. The, uh, the time measured by Gauss law is uh, 42 years. The proper length measured by Gauss law is 20 light years. Uh, the total uh, travel distance measured by speedo is 2 times L, which is 12.5 uh, light years. Okay, the distance between planet X and Earth is length contracted, is subject to length contraction, 6.25 light years. Now, Speedo thinks Gauss law is moving with respect to speedo. Gauss law thinks speedo is moving with respect to uh, Gauss law. So uh, they they will uh, make uh, observations and uh, speedo upon his return to Earth finds that he aged 13 years, Gauss law aged 42 years, but he was expecting the opposite. Well, speedo cannot make predictions based on the theory of special relativity because he's changing reference frames. He has to accelerate to 0.95c, decelerate to stop, etc. Therefore, this change of reference frames going to a non-inertial reference frame, accelerated reference frame, uh, makes this theory not work. So the observations made by Gauss law apply. And this event can be represented by a space-time graph where Gauss law is remaining in the origin uh, on the time axis, ct axis. It's a direct a straight line. Uh, we have a Gauss law moving with 0.95c, so a linear path on the space-time graph, and then return to the origin. Uh, for light traveling on the x-axis, we have x equals ct. Uh, for all possible travel directions on the xy plane, we will have this light cone, and all possible future events are represented 
uh, by uh, these uh, lines in the uh, within the cone so that's basically light cone is determining all possible uh, future events that can occur with respect to an observer who is at the origin uh, watching the events